Good evening and thanks for joining us for Fox 26 First News at 10. I'm Jennifer Elliott. We start tonight with a very sad story. A busy boulevard in Grants Pass is now open after a fatal accident left investigators on the scene for several hours. Jackson County Fire District 3 and Jackson County Sheriff's deputies arrived at the 4600 block of Foothill Boulevard just before 3 this afternoon. District 3 says an elderly man driving northbound on Foothill Boulevard somehow lost control of his truck and crashed into a steep embankment and into a tree. The reason for the crash is still unknown. Next to kin must be notified before the man's name is released. And tonight, 350 people crowded in Ashland Meeting Hall to discuss their thoughts on how marijuana should be regulated come July 1st of this year when it's legal for recreational use. And what the Oregon Liquor Control Commission is calling a listening session, everyone was able to speak with commissioners and throw in their suggestions. Attendees also got the chance to ask their biggest questions. On the commercial side, is there going to be a limit to the amount of uh, plants a commercial grow? Uh, you visited Colorado. Can you tell me if there's anything <coughs> good to say about the software that they're using to track seed to sell? Well, some of the biggest suggestions were that the OLCC should not regulate marijuana at all, residency requirements for commercial licenses, and that the OLCC should test for mold, potency, and pesticides. Tonight's meeting was the fifth out of 11 that the OLCC is holding throughout the state, so if you want answers to some of those questions, you can look on their website to find out when those will be. But come July 1st, people will be able to grow their own marijuana plants and use the drug recreationally in Oregon. As Fox 26 as Christine Pinawanich tells us in part two of her coverage on marijuana legalization, the change means big business for entrepreneurs ready to cash in and potentially big price tags for property in Southern Oregon. The great outdoors, the roughly 200 days of sunshine and the culture is what draws many people to Southern Oregon, some of whom come specifically to grow marijuana. We probably have one of the best climates in the whole country for growing cannabis. Michael Monarch is a grower and also the CEO of Green Valley Wellness, a medical marijuana dispensary in talent. He says the long, dry, hot summers in Southern Oregon helps grow bigger plants and produces better medicinal properties in cannabis. There's an awful lot of people that are growing medical marijuana here in Southern Oregon, as you know, it's sort of a mecca for it. And Kendon Leet, the owner and principal broker at Kendon Leet Real Estate, says now that marijuana legalization passed in the November election, prices could skyrocket for rural properties. The properties themselves that have the ability to be grown on, I think will increase in value. We spoke with a number of real estate brokers who say they're already getting inquiries into rural sites for marijuana grows. There's a lot of money in that industry. Leet says back when medical marijuana became legal in 1998, more growers started moving to the area and more land got snatched up for growing. He sees that happening again once recreational marijuana legalization rules are ironed out. It really is the perfect climate to grow marijuana. I mean, it's ideal. But Leet says while marijuana growers buying property in recent years has helped keep brokers busy, it may also hurt the local real estate industry in the long run. I think that the legalization of marijuana for the real estate industry is going to be a very bad thing. He says property values near large grow sites may actually go down. Leet says from his experience, many people looking to buy property get turned off if they discover a large grow site next door. When we're out showing people rural property, the vast majority, I'd say 75% plus, are saying, I don't really want someone growing next to me. But overall, Leet says marijuana legalization will most likely mean new clients for real estate agents and probably an uptick in property sales. Monarch, who was a real estate broker for 10 years, says he's talked with his friends in real estate as well, who say growers are also looking at purchasing space for indoor grow sites. Commercial spaces are in high demand right now, in Portland especially, but also in the Medford and Central Point areas. Marijuana legalization expected to open up big possibilities for Southern Oregon's real estate industry, but the full impact remains to be seen. In Medford, Christine Pitawanich, Fox 26 News. All right, Christine, thank you. Of course, tune in tomorrow night on Fox 26 for Christine's third and final installment in this ongoing story. New tonight, the Josephine County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help locating two dogs. Around four this morning, deputies say a man and woman broke into the Josephine County Animal Shelter and stole two pit bull mixed dogs out of the backside of the kennel area. 
Animal control's suspicion is that it's probably somebody that's familiar with the dogs. And, um, you know, at this point, you know, it's, it's early on in the investigation, so we're, we're still trying to weed out those details. Corporal Snyder says the suspects could face felony charges, among others, because technically these dogs are now owned by Josephine County. If you have any information about the dog's whereabouts, please contact the sheriff's office immediately. They're very cute. A man who claimed detectives beat him up was caught telling a tall tale. Alexander Thomas Zuski says detectives in Lane County, Oregon, gave him two black eyes last month while being questioned. But when police checked their video on the day of the alleged assault, this is what they saw. Thomas Zuski repeatedly punching himself in the face. Thomas Zuski admitted to the lies, saying he thought he could get out of jail. Instead, he pled guilty to filing a false report and was sentenced to time served. Now, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office says a seven-week-old baby boy died from starvation. It's a terrible story. On January 22nd, first responders were called to a home on the 800 block of Willis Avenue in Glendale. The infant, Dana Hancock, was declared dead at the scene. After a nearly one-month investigation, detectives arrested both of the baby's parents, 21-year-old Amanda Hancock and 26-year-old Stephen Williams Jr. Hancock and Williams are in the Douglas County Jail, charged with murder by abuse. Eagle Point High School was on lockdown today as SWAT teams served a search warrant in the neighborhood next to the school. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office won't say much about their investigation other than it related to property crimes. The high school was on lockdown for about 10 minutes as a precaution around 9 this morning. Uh, the, the concern was if, the, if something happened at the house where the warrant was issued and that person came towards campus, obviously during passing time is the worst time for that to happen. The sheriff's office wouldn't say how many homes were searched or if they made any arrests. And tonight, concerned residents met with the Department of Environmental Quality about proposed septic material being placed near Sam's Valley Elementary School. Fox 26 met with the owner of the land across from the school, who says they want to use fertilizer made from treated human waste. The DEQ says the process is safe. Residents, however, are fearful of runoff impacting the school, along with other concerns. Making national headlines for all the wrong reasons. Those are just some of the words this morning from Oregon's new governor, former Secretary of State Kate Brown. Fox 26's Matt Jordan brings us more from Brown, who took the oath of office this morning. With a round of applause, Oregon's 38th governor was sworn in Wednesday. It is with everyday Oregonians in mind that I take office today with purpose and enthusiasm. And Governor Kate Brown wasted no time in outlining goals for her administration after taking the reins from former Governor John Kitzhopper. Throughout my 24 years of public service, I've also sought to promote transparency and trust in government, working to build confidence that our public dollars are spent wisely. As your governor, this will not change. Brown emphasized restoring the public's trust in the government and said the legislature's in session and hasn't skipped a beat, and she intends to hit the ground running as well. It's time for us to get back to work. It's time to move Oregon forward. In Medford, Matt Jordan, Fox 26 News. Matt, thank you. We contacted the Secretary of State's office today, but we're not given a response on who will be appointed to Phil Brown's position or when. Now, the Associated Press is reporting tonight that before leaving office, former Governor John Kitzhopper commuted the sentence of this man serving a prison sentence for attempted murder. The AP says 25-year-old Sang Dao will be released from prison March 17th. He was serving a 12 and a half year sentence for attempted murder, unlawful use of a weapon and assault. His earliest release date was in late 2018. And emails obtained by Willamette Weekly reveal that Sylvia Hayes had an ambitious plan for herself while Kitzhopper was in office. According to the emails released by the magazine today, Hayes's five-year plan was designed to build her professional credibility and desirability. Now this is what she listed in her plan on January 2015, get appointed to official policy positions. February 2015 through June 2017, work the policy areas hard, develop paid speaking and outside Oregon income opportunities, speak a lot, get published a lot, set foundations for books, for me, John, John and me, outline, generate interest, sample chapters, etc.
And a former senator turned filmmaker is in Medford tonight previewing his new movie. Former Oregon State Senator Jason Atkinson visited the Criterion Theater tonight to speak about A River Between Us. The film is a documentary on the Klamath River and work done by community members along its banks. Atkinson says he turned to cinema versus politics because the story is so complicated. The best way to impact culture and get to a much broader audience of people who are turned off, frankly, by politics um, is through film. And a River Between Us will premiere at the Ashland Film Festival this year. Now, coming up, a superbug resistant to medicine kills two people in Los Angeles. How over 100 patients may have been exposed. And why and where two dentists are offering free dental work this Friday? Stay with us. We'll be right back.